Hi, my name is Lavinia, this is Peter. Today I'm very excited as I'll be doing something a little bit different. I'm going to be teaching you how to play Catan Console Edition in collaboration with Dovetail Games, the publisher. Catan is a game that has introduced many to the hobby and the Console Edition developed by Nomad Games makes it even easier to get started. If you enjoy my channel, consider subscribing and clicking the like button and the bell to get notified when I post new videos. It helps a lot. Like in Catan, in the console edition, you play a settler landing on the new island of Catan and competing against other settlers. To gather the most resources possible, build settlements, cities, roads and harbours to gather more resources, build longer roads and recruit bigger armies than the other settlers until your territory is the most glorious. The Catan console edition brings the game to life with dynamic visuals and has options to play single player, local play, online play and cross play. Whichever option you pick, once you reach 10 victory points during your turn, you are declared the winner. The great thing about the console edition, apart that the setup is done, is that you have setting options to customise the game to play exactly how you like. The main menu has an Explore Catan option at the bottom and a menu with four options. Settings for audio, video and controller settings. Library to learn about all the components of the rules. Profile to join the Dovetail community and play to select your play options like quick play or games you can configure the way you like. You also have options to play online so you can play remotely and even cross play between Xbox and PlayStation. If you prefer, you can also play locally, solo, against the dynamic AI. You also have tutorials, interactive guides, and almanac to teach you all you need to know about how to play. You can configure your character name and picture, your color, as well as dice and hex designs. You can play locally with up to four friends in one screen, but everyone can easily add a second screen, like a phone, to keep your resources and development cards private. Once you've selected your preferred options, you can start to play. The game starts with a random map of the island you compete to settle. It's always made up of six different types of terrain. There's four forests that produce lumber, four pastures that produce wool, and four fields that produce grain. And there's also three mountains that produce ore and three hills that produce brick. And finally, there's one hex of desert that produces nothing but trouble. On top of the terrain are 18 numbers, one for each hex. The six and eight are in red because they're more valuable as they're more likely to roll. That's also why they have four dots. The more dots a number has, the more likely you are to roll it. You're almost five times more likely to roll a six or an eight than you are to roll a two or a 12. There's six types of harbor also placed around the island randomly. There's one for each type of resource to trade exclusively that resource. On the other harbors, you can trade any type of resource. The rubber starts on the desert hex, and now you're ready to start. Each player will place two settlements and two roads at the start of the game. All players roll the dice automatically to decide who will go first to place their first settlement and first road. The player who rolled the highest starts placing a settlement and a road next to it. All players start with five settlements, four cities and 15 roads in the color you picked. You can always refer to the cost of these buildings by checking the reference card. Roads always have to start from a settlement or a city. Keep in mind the numbers on each hex. It's probably best to avoid placing your first settlement near a two or a 12. Then, one after the other, each player places their first settlement and road. Settlements cannot be placed next to one another. They must be at least two roads apart. The last player places both settlements and roads one after the other and receives the resources for the second settlement. Then players place their second settlement and road in reverse order. Each player receives resources from each hex surrounding that second settlement. When the first player has placed a second settlement and road, you start the game by rolling the two dice. The result indicates a hex and a resource, unless it's a 7 and it activates the robber. If it's a resource, all players who have a structure next to it gain that resource. One resource for each settlement and two for each city around the hex or hexes. If you're playing with a second screen and the resources don't appear immediately, just refresh the screen, but they usually do. If you roll a 7, two things will happen. First, if any player has 8 or more cards, they must discard half of them rounded down. Also, the active player places the robber on a new hex and steals one card from one of the players surrounding it. The robber will also block that number while it's there. If that number is rolled, none of the surrounding structures will collect the resource. Now it's time for the active player to build roads, settlements or cities, trade with other players or the bank, or buy development cards. To build, you need to pay the resources to the bank for each structure as indicated on the building cost card. 
For instance, you must pay one lumber and one brick to build a road, then place the road on the map. You can only build one road per segment and it must always start from one of your settlements, cities or another road. There's also a way to score two victory points for the player who builds the longest road. As soon as your road is at least five segments in length, you automatically score two victory points. Note that the road can be interrupted by an opponent placing a settlement on it. Also, if another player gets a longer road later on, you give those two points to that player. You can also build settlements or cities like you build roads. Note that your new settlement has to be connected to an existing road. And don't forget, it always has to be at least two roads from another building. Cities are upgrades of a settlement. To build them, you must first have a settlement, but you can do both in the same turn. As the active player, if you need resources you don't have, you can always try to trade with other players or the bank. In general, you can always trade four of the same resource for one other resource. If you have a settlement or city next to a harbour, you can trade at a better rate using maritime trade. 3 to 1 if it's a generic harbour, or 2 to 1 of that specific resource for a specialist harbour. That's a great deal, especially if you produce a lot of that resource. Note that you cannot trade development cards, you can only buy development cards. Using the buy option, you need to spend one ore, one wool and one grain to gain one card. There are three types of development cards, the green, the purple and the orange. There are three different green cards, they give special powers described on the card. With road building, you can build two roads. Monopoly lets you take all the cards from other players of a specific resource. And with Year of Plenty, you collect two resources of your choice. Once you play the card, it's discarded. You also have purple cards. When you play them, they count towards your largest army. If you are the first player to have played three knights, you collect the largest army card and gain two victory points. Just like the longest road, if another player gets a larger army later on, you give those two points to that player. Note that the knights can also be used to move the robber without the need to roll a seven, but players do not lose cards if they have more than seven in their hand. All development cards can be played before you roll the dice, but it's really only the knight you would want to play that way. Then finally, there are a few orange cards which are worth one victory point. You only use them at the end of the game. You cannot play development cards you've just bought this turn and you can only play one card per turn. Once you've done everything you need to do during your turn and you have not reached 10 victory points, it's the next player's turn. If a player reaches 10 victory points during their turn, the game stops immediately and he or she is declared the winner. Remember, you can play the orange cards as soon as you buy them and you can play all of them at the same time. So for instance, you could have eight visible points and pick up a second orange card, share it at your turn and you've won Catan. Let me give you a recap of the points you can earn during the game. You score one victory point for each settlement, two victory points for each city, two victory points on the longest road or the largest army, and one victory point per victory card. There's also a cool leaderboard feature in the console edition. The more you play, the more you win, the higher you get ranked on the board. There's also a deluxe version of the Catan console edition. You get everything from the standard edition, plus custom dice skins and hex frames, and also five new Catan maps taken from Catan World Championships. You can use these maps to play against AI, your friends or family at home or online. Now my tips to win a Catan console edition are, place those two first settlements carefully, balancing the resources, the numbers, the harbors, to ensure you get that production going as quickly as possible. Keep in mind that lumber and brick are more important at the beginning of the game and ore and grain towards the end. Harbors can help a lot. A normal harbor can be good, but a specialist harbor can be great for a monopoly strategy. Don't underestimate the power of the development cards and try to keep a poker face when you get a victory point in a local game. Be diplomatic with human players. Trade is very important. Try not to leave too early, otherwise people won't trade with you. So that's how you play Catan Console Edition. It gives you a lot of options to play remotely, to play with friends locally, and it has great graphics that brings the board to life. If you've enjoyed this video, consider subscribing and clicking the like button. And if you enjoy my content, consider supporting me on Patreon. The link is right here. We'll make more games easy soon. Bye now.